All right, we are going to, just a minute. <laughs> I've asked my dear wife if she would, uh, I have the male version of this. She's embarrassing. <laughs> I have the man's version of, of, of that hat, but I can't find it. I don't know, since we got back. It was there, but... I don't know. So I'd like to ask my wife. This is what the farmers wear. It's stylish. Uh, I'd like to ask Amy if she would sh like to share three of her favorite things about Taiwan, and then we'll be done tonight unless you have some questions. All right. Um, three of my favorite things are, well, first of all, I enjoy getting to know the pans um, very much. I just I love getting to know Dina better and... Um, and Luke and the boys and the girls that the two foster girls that are there um, it's just really really good to get to know the family um, Joshua by the way is an excellent pianist he, <laughs> he's eight years old I've never heard a boy play like him so um, that was a treat um, number two thing was getting to know the Taiwanese people and culture um, thoroughly enjoyed that um, they they have a wonderful sense of humor they're fun to talk to it's you know the language barrier is was very real there um, but it was still very fun to try to communicate uh, with them um, so that I enjoy that the third um, there's two things there's two very Taiwanese things that I experienced there um, <laughs> the first was um, well Dina it was Josiah's birthday on Monday the day before we left and um, the day we left and we had to go out and get his birthday cake. And uh, instead of taking the van out, the thing to do there is, of course, take your motorbike or your scooter everywhere. So Dina and I went out. I sat on the back, and um, we went to the bakery and got the cake. And where do you put the cake? <laughs> so I was sitting on the back, and so we just I just held the cake there, and we were driving through Tai Dong, you know, with the cake on the back of the scooter. So it was very fun. I and mean, you saw dogs on scooters. You saw everything on scooters. You know, three or four kids on scooters. She's was, serious. She's not. Kidding. It was it was uh, interesting. Also, when we were in the Japanese steakhouse with the rat, um, which we did go to the next day, hoping that we didn't eat the rat that we saw the day before. <laughs> Um, I did find, you know, a lot of things are unidentifiable in the food. Well, I did identify something in my food. It was a bug. And so what do you do in a Japanese steakhouse in Taiwan? You don't say, excuse me, you know, <laughs> there's a bug in my food. You take your chopsticks, you pick it out, put it over here, and you continue eating. So I, <laughs> that was quite an experience that, um, and I, I lived to tell. So. <laughs> So far, well, tell the little thing about how you know how long you've been a missionary. Oh, Dina said, yes, how long you've been. The first year missionary, when they find the roach in their coffee, they dump the coffee and get a new cup. The second year missionary, they take the roach out and continue to drink. Um, third year missionary will just drink the roach and thank the Lord for the protein. So. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? All right, this thing's. It's, I'm gonna put this. You have on. to wear yours. Well, it's causing me to have an echo in my ears. <laughs> All right, so we'd like to take some questions, uh, if you would. Use this mic. I'll use my lapel. Is, are we on? I don't think we're on. Now we're on. Okay. Uh, questions that you have? Yes, sir. I noticed you were having a little trouble spitting. Did you ever master that? <laughs> Um, when no one was watching, I was fine. <laughs> no, it was, it was fine. But, you know, it's, when you eat that sugar cane, you just can't get everything out. You know, you, the fibers just kind of stay there for a few hours, so you're kind of chewing for the rest, the next couple hours. <laughs> Somebody else? Yes? I was wondering about the morning exercises. Does everybody just get up and exercise like that? Not everybody, but a lot of people. You know, we were uh, where the hostel that we were in, we could look out the window and there was a big courtyard. And, you know, there was 20, 30, 40 people. Did somebody, like, lead it? Like, they were all doing Yeah, there was a boom box and it was playing this serene music, like this. No, there's sorts. There's two different groups. The one was just shadow, they call shadow boxing, boxing where shadow they just box. do the moves and stuff. And the other one had the swords where they were doing, the doing that. So. A lot of the older people. I guess it's protection. <laughs> to meet some granny with a sword. Hi! <laughs> yeah, that's normal. The early it's early too. It's pretty pretty early. Six o'clock. 
Six o'clock. Yes. Which ones? Or the ones? One was chick, chicken feet, the squid. Squid was the ones with the squid. And they had tofu on the sticks, and they, they had everything. In fact, a delicate. Excuse me? <laughs> no way. <laughs> no. Uh, one of the things that uh, is a delicacy right now is, you know, I'm just, we're all family here, but the, uh, the chicken, below the tail feathers, there is a little piece of meat, the rear. And it's a delicacy now. You just put them like shish kebab on a stick and you fry them and you chicken rear, or whatever it is. I mean, what, I don't know what they call them. But chicken hearts, chicken, you know, neck is a big one. Chicken face, you know, they eat, you know, it's just very, I want to say something about the timing. Nothing starts there until like 10 o'clock. You know, they, they have the morning exercise and everything, but, you know, we went out. We could not go to any stores. They were just not open, you know, until like 10 o'clock, but the night, night life is, they go to the late at night. In fact, we were kind of first, we thought what was going on, you know, Dean and Luke wouldn't eat dinner until like 8 o'clock, you know, we're like, you know, we're about ready to go to bed. <laughs> yes? I have a question about, uh, like, children's schooling over there. How does, how does that work? Is they go to school. They, just, they, have, they have government schools, and it's, like it's taken a lot. Uh, yeah, they do. They, they have breaks, but it's, it's not as long of a break. Not as long of a break. And they go from early in the morning till like 4 5 o'clock at night. You know? And their education system is much more serious than America. I mean, I don't know how to explain that to you, but it's serious business. I mean, it's that what they're hoping is that their children can escape poverty and everything is poured into education. Everything. It's not, they have private kindergartens where, you know, people will pay big bucks for their kids to go. And uh, anything to add to that? Okay. That's good. Yes. I'll be back to you, Jack. Yes. Sorry? <clears throat> I don't, I don't really, I can't really comment to that. It's not as bad as America in that in Taidong. It's bad in certain areas. Certain areas. Certain areas, too. Yeah. Certain areas, we didn't hardly see any police officers, uh, and uh, which was interesting. There was a Taiwanese saying something about when you're in an intersection. I don't know what it what it's, I can't remember what it is, but it's some. But they don't. They don't. They the police let you alone. You don't. You know, parking as violations. As long as you don't run them over. Parking violations, mm -hmm. driving violations are zip, nil, nothing. There's no nothing. You can do anything you want to do. You know, when you pull up to a stoplight. 40 scooters will pull all around you, in front of you, and beat you off of the light. And nobody gets mad at each other, nobody yells at each other, it's just non-existent. They just, they just, they don't even look at each other. You know, it's just like, they're flies, you know, swarms of scooter flies. And that's just what you do. And if somebody's going too slow for you, you pass them. No matter where you are, it doesn't matter. You know, if there's three or four cars abreast on a road, you just pass them. I like that kind of drive. <laughs> Jack. Homeschooling is a rather new thing. In fact, Dina is one of the spokespeople for her area because it's not really accepted. It's not really encouraged. And I think they're making inroads. She actually spoke to the governor of Tai, uh, tai Dong before we got there, um, the week before, representing the homeschool unit. And um, her kids are actually registered this coming year at Concord Christian Academy so that there's some legitimacy back here in the States. And uh, they were taking the, what's it called, the Utah? What is it called? Uh, Iowa. Sorry, Iowa, Utah. Yeah, Iowa testing, whatever, for legitimacy and those kind of things. But they, their education system is very important over there. So I hope that answers your question. Yes? What was with the birds? Is that part of his rehab? What, what was that no, the guys are in-house rehab. So there's okay. 20 or 30 guys there, and they have a very strong... <laughs> Uh, schedule, but they have to keep them busy because these guys are coming, you know, off of drugs, and so they they have like, oh, they have they have that huge turtle, they have lots of birds. It's not just that, not just the birds. That was just a small portion. They have big cages of things. And they also have a like a farm a little further out. We didn't get to farm. Like, with these pigs, guys farm stuff. Pigs, other farm animals that they they have to take care of. Yeah, it's a very good very good busy. ministry. Um, it's run by a different organization, um, but it's a Christian fundamental organization. Uh, Luke works with them, or has worked with them, 
in the past, and when he comes back for furlough, he's scheduled to teach in there, teach Bible in there. But um, that was that was encouraging to me to see something like that. It's a good place. Yeah. Yes. The hat that Amy has on is this a jelly hat, or is this more for a special occasion? This is an Aborigines hat. We went to an Abri Aborigines village and um, purchased it from. They made it right there in the shop. And we purchased um, several several things there um, for ourselves and our kids. And the pans actually got, um, you'll probably see them when they come, outfits for their boys to wear at that same shop. It's actually the, vil the not the village, but the tribe of one of their foster girls. Um, so they, you know, they have a kind of a connection there. But it was, it was it, this is an Aborigines um, hat. Okay, let me give you a background a little bit. Think of American Indians and tribes. And there are two groups of people. There are like Chinese mainland kind of Chinese, and then the Aborigines. And they coexist together. There's equal of each. There's no, and there's no racism. They, there's sometimes there's a feeling that the Aborigines are not as educated or smart, but there's not like uh, not not like any kind of uh, segregation or anything like that there. But it, they're different tribes. There's so many different tribes. Luke's from a certain tribe, and Abor he's Aborigines. But they are mostly mountain farming people. And uh, that's Aborigines. According to the tribe, that's probably a tribe design of some sort. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. To give you an idea, that, that, was, uh, that was about $6.00. You know, and someone spent time. There are different things are different prices. Some are humongous prices, and some are. It depends what you're mm -hmm. you're trying to look for. All right. Yes, Mark. Uh, what? The black dog. Okay. Yeah. There is a native dog called the black dog, and you see them all over the place. It's a certain breed of dog. They're everywhere. Unfortunate. Well, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but there's dogs everywhere there, and they, you know, it's not like wild dogs though. That most of them have collars, and most of them, um, but they run a lot. They're a lot everywhere. But there's a certain dog. I don't know. It's called. They call it the black dog, and it's native to, to that area. So that's the main pet. They have a lot of black dogs. <laughs> What's that? No, no. <laughs> they don't eat. Actually, up in the mountains, they. Uh, Luke says that they do eat. Dog, I think it was in the mountains or where? He says in the winter. In the winter. Yeah. Well, that makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cup, cup, yeah. Uh, did you see any cows? I didn't see any cows. They said they have some cows. We saw some. Not a lot of beef, Mark. Something else. Yeah. No, no, very little beef. No. Yeah, you're not going to eat a lot of beef. You might have a little, and even when they serve meals, you got a lot of rice and you got a little bit of flecks of, of meat and a lot of vegetables. But not a lot of, but I want to just tell you, I say this on the website, and again, we're all family. Our system was much more regular there than here. I've had, pro I've had problems since I've been back, but not there. The vegetables and everything, the rice, I don't know what, everything was great. But don't laugh, it's real. Yes. Yeah, what about the chicken feet? Well, I didn't have any. <laughs> no, we, we didn't eat any of this. It's a little hard for me to stick, so I, I cook, I think, a little bit more as a soft meat. You know, I don't ask. I just avoid it. There's, but there's lots of them, and people eat them. Yeah. People, you know, it's just like a delicacy. Really quick, we'll take some popcorn questions. Did they have lizard in the foster kids, too? Are they able to? They offered their oldest one with them, who, is, who just graduated from high school, if she could raise her money to come back. And that is a possibility, but she just chose not to try to do it, and she's not coming with them. Yeah. Did you, did you see any oh, it's huge. It's, yeah, yeah, it is all baseball. Yeah, it's the Yankees pitcher guy. You know, Chang Wang, what is his name? Yeah, bless you. Yeah, it's him. <laughs> it's him. It's everything is him. Everything, everything is him. And I happen to have a Yankee shirt that I brought along with me. You're the bomb there. If you like baseball, you are the man. Yeah. Did you see clothing stores? Oh, yeah. Lots of. No way. Clothing, what are the dresses where they were? Oh, it depends on where you go. We went into, Alyssa and I went into a shop, and they're asking like 90 to $100 per piece, like for a top or for a skirt. We walked out. But other places you can get like comparable to like department store prices for clothing. 
We understand it's American. That's American. No, which means that it's right. like a it's week. It's American like a week money. salary for them. But these are American-made outfits that they're selling. No. 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 <laughs> Make John. You know what's you know what's funny about that is Bob that you don't see stuff made in Taiwan there, and, and you know Luke and Dina said they they export it all. You don't see that kind of that stuff. You know, it's just not there. There's a few things that are made in Taiwan. I picked up an internet cable that was would here would have been like thirty or thirty five dollars or something, and there it was three three bucks because it was made in Taiwan. You know, but electronics, computers, no way. I mean that's all. High prices. You know, you can't buy any electronics there cheap. Just doesn't happen. Okay, somebody over here? Yes, ma'am. You said they don't have much beef. Well, what's the space when you go to a steakhouse? What was that? It's <laughs> <laughs> a black dog. That's a black dog. Uh, we, we did have steak there, but it's it's not it's few and far between we I didn't I don't remember seeing any cows did you see any cows? no I, they said they have them I, I didn't see any it's all maybe they ship in the beef oxen they have oxen I don't know I don't know and the steakhouse was not unreasonable either in price the pizza was unreasonable but the steakhouse was not unreasonable in price it was comparative yes anything else as we finish here anybody everybody ready to go home tonight yes Thank you. Somebody else? Yes, Greg? What's the population? Population in Taidong is about, uh, I think it's 120,000. I don't know if Taiwan, I do know that 25% of the world is Chinese. So that means mainland, see, Taiwan is China, mainland China is communist and wants to get Taiwan back. So there's always a threat of war there. America is the big brother who protects Taiwan. So that's, the, you know, it's uh, often China will do, uh, China, mainland China, communist China will do war exercises in between the two in the bay there. So that they'll, they'll fire over Taiwan to intimidate them, scare them, and all that stuff. You know, so that's kind of weird. But they don't, they don't live in fear because of America. America is the big brother who has vowed to protect them. So I think that's probably why they have a friendly relationship with us. Anybody else? Final questions? Done? Going? Done? Yes? <laughs> Brother, I ripped that. It's called glove chicken. It's really called that. And they give you a glove. And they, what they do with that chicken is they have this huge, I don't even know how to explain it. Imagine a big something. Vat. Vat, pot, something. vat that has holes down in it, okay? And like whole tubes. And in the middle the, uh, is like boiling something, whatever. But the tubes, they stick the whole chicken down in there. And they, for about 10 minutes, they just chicken it all. And did you see where the feet were? Yeah. And uh, so, and that's chicken it all down there. And they, they call it glove chicken. They put it on your a big plate and they give you a glove. And you rip it apart and we there rip it apart and left. Well, we didn't eat the feet, did we? No, didn't eat the feet. But we ate it all. It was good. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> yeah, Scott. Okay, so what was the bizarrest thing you ate? Or what was the thing that we would say would be the bizarrest thing you ate? That I, we, I actually? That you ate. Let's, let me defer that question. No, let's, you. <laughs> me? Yeah. A hamburger. Okay. We were, we were in the mar this market, and uh, oh. Luke oh. and Dina say, oh, try these, Mike, our kids like them. And they look like sesame, like cracker things. They're fish. They were like real fish, fish stinky fish. Thing. And so I pop one in my mouth and I'm like, I'm dying. It was terrible. Oh, I mean, it was like the raunchiest, oh. old, oldest fish, whatever. And the pan children are, pop, you know, they're like, it's like popcorn. <laughs> you know, they're like, and I'm like, I'm looking for something. I'm looking for a Coca-Cola. I'm looking, I'm dying. I'm thinking, I'm going to die right here. So that was probably the worst. You try, he tried the seaweed chips, didn't you? Oh, my <laughs> land. They weren't bad, really. They Did you guys bad. have seaweed chips over there? They're like a chip them. and it's pure seaweed. They're terrible. They're addictive, though. You want to eat another one. <laughs> I couldn't stand them. Um, well, the seaweed chips, and then the, the thing you saw me eating, that was like, um, it was like a very, very sweet bean paste in the middle, which was the best part of it. And the outside, it was kind of hard to get past the texture and the look of this thing. 
but it was like a cornstarch kind of something. You could taste the cornstarch, so I knew it was edible. And it, it was like a sweet dessert type thing. And you know, In the car, the Dina was handing out these candies. Oh, and they're like, good. oh, they're great. I like those. Yeah, I pop, I pop one in my mouth, I'm like, okay, I'm going after this. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like phlegm. I mean, it was like eating phlegm. <laughs> And I'm like, why would anyone want to eat? It tastes like cherry flavored phlegm. I mean, that's exactly what it was. And I'm like, why would anyone? I'm sorry if you're, we're all family here tonight, but that's exact. it was the worst thing. And I was, I'm like, again, looking for somewhere I can get rid of this. You know, it was just terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, I wonder if that's what they think when they pop a Werther's or something, you know, over here when they come to visit. We don't think about that. Americans are so... You know, honestly, we are so sheltered and we are so one thinking, one side. Do you realize that over there no one speaks English? You understand, when they were, when they were singing that song, Here Am I, Lord Send Me, they were transliterated. You know, they, they really didn't understand mostly, most of them didn't understand what they were singing. They were just, Here Am I, my, they're reading Chinese phonetics of what it should sound like in English. So it's, it's completely, we think the world revolves around us. It just, it just doesn't at all. My dad couldn't understand the point that, that the preacher does not preach to them first in English. He, he didn't get the point that they don't speak any English in their church, any at all. He was like, well, does he translate it? Or, no, nobody speaks English there, Dad. No one. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just pretty, we just have this one way of thinking. All right. One more real quick. Yeah. If, if education is so important to them, is English important to them? I mean, to their... Uh, uh, like probably not to the older folks, but I mean, do they teach English? In to, to a point, but you got to understand, um, they don't need English. You know, they, they are, that side of the world, you know, they're not dependent. They're not like, oh, I've got to, we, we put ourselves in a position that is, is untrue. We think that everyone functions in the world on English. It doesn't. It really doesn't. They, they could be very happy never speaking English in their entire lifetime. And they could bank, and they could do everything, and the height of technology, and just would not have any interest. Some ways they're t more technologically advanced than us, honestly. And some of their technology is much more, that works together much better. So, all right. Pastor, to answer Scott's question, one of their main reasons to learn any English at all is that if China should take over Taiwan, they can flee and still survive. The biggest population of Chinese in the world outside of mainland Yeah, and yeah. So uh, they do learn English from that standpoint, but it's not a Yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't de-emphasize it, but it's not everything to learn English, no, you absolutely know. Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess I thought all the young people would know it, but you know, we had teenagers coming up to us and say, "How do you do?" You know, and like, uh, <laughs> "Hi, man." You know, they're no. And the the fake one of the funniest things to me is any English word printed on a shirt is cool. So you know, you, it's not. It's very. You, you know, you're walking down. The kids got on a shirt. Washing machine. <laughs> You know, it's wherever they pick up. What, what's the shirt that you saw that was like a tag that was, that was? Oh, yeah. It was one of the boys, actually, on their shorts. It was hilarious. It was like you would see on a tag, like machine wash only, you know, tumble dry low, whatever. It was on the outside of his It's shorts. printed. Printed. I, I think they just look for anything, anything English and just copy it down and stick it on the. I told the Sunday school class that I, I almost bought this Mickey Mouse. Uh, it was a wind up and it played music. And it said on it, it said, um, I love you uh, in cats, in elephants, in rats. <laughs> Makes no sense. But, you know, it, it was English. Yeah, it was English. You know, and that it's just weird. I mean, it's all over the place. Like the guy in the th that says, I still hate George Bush, he, he was clueless. I walked up to him and I had Luke translate. I said, do you know what's on your shirt? He was like, no, he had no clue what was on his shirt. 
you know. And some of you probably say, well, of course he knows George Bush. They don't speak any English, and they don't, the adults don't care to. They, have, they can't sound it out. All their words look like, you know, hieroglyphics. You know, they don't have any, you know, and it's hard for Americans to get that. They have no desire, you know. So, anyhow. Abigail. Oh, we brought something back that's a, a staple over there. And it's this, it's, it looks like a tennis racket, a small tennis racket, and has wire screen in it, right? And in the handle of it, you put batteries in it, and uh, it has a button on it. And you hold down the button, and you squat a fly or hit it, and it fries it. Whoa, bam! Fries it. <laughs> it's great. We brought one back if you want to use it. It's great. I mean, arcing spark. Whoa, bam! You know, it's probably so dangerous, it's not even. <laughs> but pa the pans have one, and I was walking around my deck looking for animals. Yeah. Cool. So far, Princess has survived every whack, so don't worry about her. No, I didn't do the cat. Didn't do the cat. All right, let's close tonight. And uh, once again, I just want to thank everyone for allowing us to go. And I, I really do believe it would be a benefit all around. When the pans come in September, you know how you got to love them now, okay?